In this presentation, we will take a look at a side-by-side -side comparison of the transactions of an example problem for recording the supplies inventory into fund accounting, modified accrual, this example, into the general fund using two different methods that can be used for modified accrual basis, those being the purchases method and the consumption method. Note that both of these methods can be used for modified accrual and both differ from the standard accrual type of system, which we will take a look at in a future presentation when we think about the same types of transactions recorded to the, the government-wide activity. So government-wide activity, normal accrual accounting, then we have the fund accounting using modified accrual. Options for the modified accrual include these two, purchases method and the consumption method. Here is our side-by-side -side example. We'll basically go through this example problem and note what the similarities and differences are as we go through the recording of these transactions. We got the consumption on the left. We got the purchases method on the right. We'll just list out what's activity that is happening as we record these transactions. First, first transaction. We're going to say that we basically sent out the purchase order. So the purchase order, remember, is something that we wouldn't, uh, we haven't received the inventory and we haven't paid the cash. Therefore, on normal accrual accounting, no transaction. However, in governmental accounting, fund accounting, transaction into this holding account called encumbrances, other side into the fund balance type of account, the net equity account, uh, the net asset type of account, what would be the equity account of the encumbrances outstanding. So that's going to be the same for either methods, the consumption and the purchases method. Next, we're going to say that we received the inventory. Now the inventory has been received at a different amount, the actual amount as opposed to what the estimate was. Before we can put the, the inventory on the books as either inventory or expenditures, depending on the consumption versus purchases method, we need to reverse what happened in terms of the encumbrances. So the encumbrances is just a holding account until we can actually record the inventory so now we have the point in time that we should record the inventory under one of the more common methods like an accrual or cash method therefore we're going to reverse exactly the prior transaction and that again is going to be the same between the two methods now we have the difference between the two methods we received the inventory for an amount slightly different than the estimate on the purchase order we're going to record it on the books for that amount under the consumption method we're going to record it in terms of the supplies account, which is more of an accrual basis method. What's going to happen, we're going to put it on the books and then do our normal kind of cost of cost of goods sold types of uh, calculation, beginning inventory plus purchases minus inventory to record the expenditure at the amount consumed as opposed to the amount that was uh, paid for under a cash basis method, hence the name, the consumption method. So that, that means we're going to increase the inventory asset account as opposed to expense account. And we're going to credit, in this case, cash, saying we paid the cash. On the purchases method, we're going to record the expenditure at the point in time that of the purchase time. And hence the name purchases, because we're going to record the expense at the purchase price. In this case, we paid cash. Therefore, the purchases method is going to be closer to a cash base type of method. So this is going to be the key difference on the income statement. On the consumption method, we're, we're using a method more closer to an accrual basis on the income statement, uh, uh, income statement type of account for governmental accounting. We're more on a cash type basis. And then the next item is that we have a physical count of the inventory. So the physical count of the inventory, I'm just going to subtract these two out. We're going to say that the 851500 minus the 774400, the physical count was 77,100. And therefore, under kind of an accrual type system, under a periodic system, we would say, all right, I'm going to write down the inventory to the amount of the physical count. And therefore, I need to write it down by 774400 because this amount minus that amount gets to the physical count of the 77100. And the difference is going to go to expenditure, then recording the expenditure at the amount that we consumed as opposed to the amount that we paid for. Now, you, you would think that we would stop there. That's basically where we would stop on a normal accrual type of accounting method. But then we have this last transaction that we need to do. And what we're trying to do here is basically just say, hey, this is the net assets, the assets minus the liabilities, what would be kind of like the equity section, the amount that people are going to want to try to lay claim to in the future. We want to take it out and say, hey, this, this amount is going to be uh, non non spendable so the amount related to the inventory remember that the inventory on the books at the end of the time period is now 70 70,100 we need to say the net value 
the assets minus the liabilities, the equity type section, the fund balance type section. Part of that, the 77100 is already spent, represents the assets on the books. And therefore, don't try to think that you can make an appropriation for it. The only way to basically do that is then to just basically is, is an attack on this last journal entry, which is both inside of the equity section. We've already done the accrual accounting. We just want to take it out of one kind of equity type account, fund balance type account, assets minus liability account, put it into the other so that we can note that assigning uh, within the, the balance sheet. On the purchases side of things, then uh, we're going to say that when we have the inventory, we've already done everything we need to do on a cash basis. So you would think it would be done at this point in time. However, we want to end up in the same spot. We want to end up basically with the equity section showing the fact that we already have some amount that's going to be assigned. So really this adjustment that we're doing here has to do more with the equity section than tracking the inventory, the asset, because we've already tracked the, the inventory or expensed it basically more on a cash basis or on a purchases basis. We've already expensed it. So by us putting it back on the books in terms of inventory, that's a little bit funny because we're kind of double counting it now. We've already expensed the entire thing. We're putting it back on the books as an asset. Why are we doing that? Really, we, we want to end up with this fund balance uh, showing that the assets minus the liabilities represents the fund balance and break out the portion of the fund balance that can't be consumed because it represents assets that are already basically still on the books. So we have to do the physical count still so that we can do this transaction not necessarily really to record the inventory because we're on more of a cash basis, but so that we can record the, the fund balance allocation here and end up basically in the same spot. So then at this point in time, under the two methods, the consumption and purchases method, the income statements are going to be different because we recorded on the purchases met or on the consumption method at the, at the amount that we consume, not the amount we purchased and the purchases method we recorded at the amount that is purchased. However, once we then do the post-closing trial balance, will it be in the same spot? And the key point here is that we have this assignment that's going to be the same as well. So if we take a look at that comparison before we close anything out, you'll note that the key point is on the consumption and the purchases method. This amount that represents the, the net value, the assets minus liabilities, has been broken out. We've broken out the amount that needs to be assigned because it's, all, it's being represented by the assets up top. However, if you look at the income statement, then... You'll note here we have it based on the consumption method. It's less because the other portion represents the 77,100. Over here, we're basically on a cash basis method. We wrote off the whole thing that we that we paid for and still put the amount on the books as an asset. Why did we do that? That's a little funny because we, we wanted this amount to be down there. And at the end of the day, once we close out this amount, once we close out the income statement to the what would be similar to the equity section, fund balance assets minus liabilities will then be in the same position. So at the end of the day, under both methods, we'll end up at the same position, although the temporary accounts will differ. So now you can see that we have uh, the same component assets minus liabilities, the same. We have the inventory on the books for both items, even though we recorded the, the income statement under this method more on a, a cash basis method. And then we have the reflection in the fund balances with the fund balances that is non-spendable.